scary stuff. No, I'm kidding. Really? Haha. Uh -huh. The databases are not scary. And there's nothing has to be scary about it. That's what we're gonna do in this series. We're gonna demystify your database. We're gonna show you how to use it in the best possible way. Very simple, very clear. Open the door, step into the database world. Let's talk databases. Hi guys, let's talk about something very interesting today. Let's talk about object-oriented versus relational databases. Are you an object or are you an entity? That is the question of today, at least. Um, <clears throat> what is, um, first of all, what you have here is uh, my wonderful drawing of the house and the tree. And what it's meant to represent is reality. Now, just like this drawing is not a very good representation of a reality, the same way none of our models are very good representation of reality. It's good enough. You understand that this is a house, right? You may not want to live in this house, but you understand that it's a house. Same way, all our models, these are just models. You understand, you find a way to manipulate a certain concept, deal with it, do whatever you gotta do, and you're out of there, okay? Now, you have uh, two different approaches, uh, in the database world at least. Uh, a relational, which is the grandfather of all approaches. Um, back in the 60s, uh, uh, with, it was first formulated based on the set theory. And uh, it has really run since then with very little changes. Uh, we've been living in a tuple world for, uh, for a long, long time now. Then after some 20 odd years, came around uh, Mr. Object Oriented. Because you know what? Most people were programming in the object oriented world. And they wanted to persist their data. So why did they need to break their heads with these ORMs, right? The, just saying it is kind of gives you allergy. Uh, the object oriented, uh, object relational mappings. Uh, who needs them? You got, you're programming in an object oriented world. You want to persist your object. That's all you want. Why you got to break your head? How is it going to break into entities? How is it going to fit the constraints? You, you don't have enough problems as a programmer. You don't need additional worries, right? So that's why people started saying, hey, uh, we're smart. We're programmers. Let's make object oriented databases. How about that? Take your object, plop it onto a disk, and go home. Everybody's happy. Well, not so fast. Uh, it turns out that it really there is no one right model, right? Everyone's got their own slice of the reality. It's like peeping through a keyhole. I really like that. Think of things as a peeping through a keyhole. It depends on the keyhole, but uh, what do you see? Right? Sometimes the keyhole is a little wider, you see more. Sometimes it's a little narrow, and you just don't see a whole lot. Uh, and same thing here in the relational world you see things the way that they should be could be it's it's a world of possibilities i'm sure you've seen the uh venn diagrams right uh a bunch of circles overlapping like this this is a world of possibilities each circle is a set of possibilities and like for example I can have a courtyard with one or more trees it's a set of possibilities do I have to have a tree there no not at all but can I possibly have a tree yes in the object oriented world it's a different peephole I have to have a tree if I don't have a tree then uh, there's nothing to talk about what can a tree do it has a method it can grow right it has properties it has leaves branches that's the, the object-oriented world is a lot more natural, but it's also a lot slower. Because the wonder of the relational model is that through mathematical tricks, you're suddenly able to operate on thousands of trees at a time. Not like the object-oriented world where you have to go one tree at a time. You wanna grow a tree? Okay, one at a time. Here, you can grow a whole forest. Boom, you have a forest, right? Now, nothing is perfect, right? The relational model is very good. It's very solid. 
we all love it, use it, blah, blah, blah. But it's not everything. And it's got its limitations. And especially now, when we're getting a lot of unstructured data and people are breaking their heads on how to put it into the normalized tables, this is where we really get into the new animal, the object relational database management system, ORDBMS. Hmm, try to say that three times fast. Uh, <clears throat> but truth is that all major vendors, uh, IBM, Microsoft, Oracle, they're already there. They, they already allow you to use uh, objects. You, they allow you to use uh, programming languages and uh, that, that, that you use to, uh, to create your, your normal applications, to create your own custom objects, custom uh, types, uh, spatial data, you name it. Uh, it's, it's free for all now. And I think that's the direction that we're going to be going in because uh, you're going to see more of an integration and you're going to see uh, more of these people wearing away and people getting better and better at modeling the actual reality as it is and you're going to have much less of a problem with the mappings and you're going to have much more natural division of responsibility between the application layer and a database layer and that's really I think where things are going and uh, we'll discuss that in a different whiteboard.